Hi, how, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. It's amazing. No worries. Thank you for talking with me today. It's um, it's it's great to have you. I've just been watching the p- couple of episodes and I'm hooked already. It's going to be a great season. <laughs> I agree. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. You you seen more than I've seen. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I can assure you it's really good. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm glad. Glad to hear that. Anyways, as you're um, new to the series, I was wondering if you could just start by telling us a little bit about your character and who he is and what role he's going to play in the series. Sure. Uh, Diamond Sampson. Um, Diamond Sampson is, I think it is a, a very kind of disciplined, um, he's a comprehensive type of guy, meaning that he just, you know, he, he has a lot of, a lot of attributes to himself. It's just about how he kind of goes about using those attributes. He started an organized crime syndicate called Chicago Brothers Incorporated. He uh, resonates from the South Side of Chicago, and he uh, it opens up with him coming out doing a stint of 15 years. And he did that because he had some complications with some product that he felt that was just kind of you know wasn't wasn't conducive to the streets. And he you know he has a relationship with the streets and with his side of town that he really still has a lot of pride in it, despite that he's doing what the streets was or anybody would deem bad and drugs, he he, he still has a lot of good in his heart. Uh, with that being said, he's also a very feared individual. You know, he's a former boxer. Uh, he's in the streets know who he is. And but when it comes down internally, he's, he's conflicted because he's learned a lot about himself and he's evolved. That time in prison has allowed him to kind of learn more about himself, more about what he wants to do in life um, and have a more of a passion. And he has such a love for his brother who basically runs the, the syndicate and why he's locked away. And, you know, they have started to they have such a love relationship. But there's also an eternal struggle because, like, again, everything's about power. Everything's about relationships. Everything's about love and deceit. And I think there's a lot of things with Diamond that is going on that you get to see him evolve as a person in a battle between who he once was and who he wants to be as it continues to go on. And I think, you know, I think it's, it's going to be good. I think we all kind of share some of those entities in our own lives. Absolutely. And it's so, I mean, it's such a gorgeous character to play because he's got so much going on. Even on, from the first episode, I found that there is so much going on internally. Um, like there's a, this small bit where he's sleeping on the floor um, yeah. in his apartment, back in his apartment, because he's obviously not assimilated back to like comfiness. Yeah. Did you do a lot of research on um, convicts coming out and trying to assimilate to like real life? I did. Um, I think it was important to show the authenticity. And like, I, I've never been incarcerated. So I wanted to really tap in by asking people, by doing research on how it felt when you first get out of prison. From when you first walk out the gate, how do you feel? How, what do you hear? How are your senses? And I, uh, and they told, told me your senses are on high alert because even while you're inside, you're always kind of on high alert when you're inside because you just don't know. So when you come out, it's like you're still on that same edge. And but, you know, things feel different. Things taste different. You know, like you said, the comfortability of being in this nice ass condo all of a sudden, this big bed. It's not something I'm used to. 15 years I've been sleeping on a hard cot. With you know, uh, uh, and, and uh, no, none of those luxuries, so I'm not acclimated to sleeping in this bed. That bed is uncomfortable for me. So it was something that I I brought to the table. Then asked, could I you know introduce this into the, into the scene for the character because he wouldn't sleep in that bed. That's what I was told from people. He would not sleep in that bed. He would be it, he would kind of be uncomfortable in that sense. And the part of just waking up is different. Where I'm waking up, I woke up on my own cognizance. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't happen in prison. You know, so I thought it was important to show that. And I, and I hope to anybody that, you know, has been incarcerated, I hope I paid some type of homage to that and to their struggle and, and to their acclimation and to the back into society. Absolutely. And it, it's done so well, as well as this, like you said before, the balance between who he kind of wants to be now, like that kind of barbershop thing that he's been like, like cultivating in prison with the support of like the guards and also immediately like you're thrown into this aspect that he might be pulled back into doing crime mm-hmm. and and the syndicate. So how was it balancing those kind of um, this turmoil within him? Uh, I, I think that it's, it's good because, I mean, we all have some type of turmoil. And I was I was I was I looked deeply inside of who I am as a person and what I battle with. And a lot of times that's battling between, you know, am I progressing in life? Uh, and my, you know, doing the right thing. Sometimes it's dealing with and acting well, you know, okay, the next job. So when I looked at Diamond, I saw that, you know, 
the the, the barbershop before he even went in was a staple to him. That was a place and a lot. And even in my, you know, before when I had hair <laughs> and my dad used to take me to the barbershop, it meant something to me because that's when you heard all the older men talking and you heard the different opinions and how people, you know, approach certain situations and some of the craziest conversations happen in the barbershop. So as Diamond is in prison, he develops that passion to cut hair. And as he develops that passion, he de develops relationships because that's where you have conversation with other people. And when he comes out, you know, you see how that is implemented to his life. That's something he wanted to pull from prison. That's the only thing he really wanted to pull from prison was his passion for cutting hair. So now when he's in this, you know, in, in the element back into society, he wants that because that kind of helps keep him grounded. But everything that comes around it, in a sense, for us, the old thing is that that's still that's comfortable for him. That's where he lies. Like that position of power and CBI is where he still, that's his antagonist. That's what he still wants. So he's trying to merge the two together in a way that he wants it to happen, but he can't get it both ways. He can't get it the way he wants. He can't cultivate the way he wants it. He has to try to, you know, deal with the way things have changed, but also he has to deal with this person in Tommy Egan, who's coming into his city, all of a sudden dis disrupting you know, saying the, the comfortability of how the city has been run for all these years. So he's interested and intrigued by that. So, you know, he's he, he's, he's getting pulled in a lot of different directions. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's taking a lot of his Zen like mentality to, you know, to, to be able to deal with everything that's going on. It's just like he's like, I just want it to be peaceful. And then immediately it's like, oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's not going to happen that way. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's, it's, it's a struggle. <laughs> what I really enjoy about your character is that there's this um oh, he delivers some really great lines really menacingly but quite calm and collected like you said that zen quality he kind of uses as his kind of power like even in the in like I said the first episode where that guy comes in and you're not quite sure what's happening and I quite really enjoyed your performance of this guy who can threaten but without saying a lot yeah. or being like too loud or having a like like a knife how was how fun was it playing those kind of antagonist parts of him i i first of all i, I really enjoy this character <laughs> if you don't know <laughs> it like they don't come out like i really when i when i got this i really i was like i was like lord this this is the one this is the one i, I, I want this one this is the one um it was it was it was great because it's like you're always trying to figure out you know like he, he's skeptical he's come out of prison like he, he doesn't know these different moves and these different things that are going on, and let alone somebody just coming into the shop and asking questions. Like questions make you makes Diamond very skeptical. Like where are you coming from? What's your angle? What are you doing? Because that's how prison life is treated, but that's how street life is. You, everybody comes in has some type of motive or agenda. You don't know if they're trying to pull you in closer to to get rid of you, or you just don't know. So to play these different parts to be able to like. OK, well, who is this? It's like I would ask myself the questions in my own head, like, you know, who is this person? What do they want? And why are you coming to me? Why are you talking to me that way? But at the same time, not giving away things on my end. It's kind of like a, a slow poker game. Exactly what it kind of, you know, you're playing. You know, So I, I had an amazing time, you know, coming up to stories in my own head and also kind of allowing to come out and intriculate into, you know, what's happening in the scene. And it, it's been great. And I, I just look forward to it. I like those type of scenes. Yeah, you do it so well. I might add, I want to stress that you do it really well. It's really good to watch you on screen. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. No worries. Um, so Power has got this, it's just a huge kind of TV show with a lot of big fans. And this is um, taking the show and placing it in a new city with a new cast. How does it feel coming on board in this new season? <laughs> I, I tell you, Sarah, it, it feels amazing because um, just to take it to a, a new city, like, you know, because New York is a staple for power. We all know that. New York is a staple for power. But we got to be able to take this whole staple into a whole other city with different players and a different way of life and a different type of game. And not only just, you know, for Diamond. Diamond, you know, his character is from Chicago. But you have Tommy Egan leaving everything behind. So what's very intriguing is seeing him completely have to transition from a city that he ran, that he knows so very well, and leave past, leave back relationships, but also leave back a whole city on its way to somewhere else. And then it just happens to end up in another city. That's like, you know, flying with no bags, you know, and flying standby. You just don't know where you're going to end up or where your clothes are at. 
And he ends up in this other city and just all of a sudden falls right into all this different controversy and, 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 and drama and dilemmas. But he's thriving off of it. He's like, oh, there's opportunity here. And, you know, so that's amazing for the story because we're coming from New York and we're moving into a whole other city. So I think that's very intriguing. And then I just want to give homage to Chicago and respect and give their flowers because that city is so rich with culture and so rich with history that I feel like it's the best city to play this whole power, this whole power book force for into because everybody can relate. You know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, that's Chicago. They think about all the mob ties and everything. So now they get ready to see these family ties. And I think people are like, oh, OK, that's how it was built. So it's, just, it's you know, I think it's going to add a lot of light bulbs and excitement and energy going off, you know, in the coming weeks. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, it's a cliche to say that Chicago is like another character in the show, but it is <laughs> does bring like a new kind of landscape. And it's, did you do like much research on the history of Chicago and it's like, you know the crime and like the mob and because it's got loads of different kind of families running the show and it's yeah. got its own rich kind of history it is and i think it's it, you know the landscape and the skyline can be can you can associate with new york so it doesn't take you too far away it's not like we're going to nevada somewhere like that so we're going somewhere so i think people still can gravitate to that but you know not just you know with the families the politics how mob ties rely into politics of uh, the division of the city, how, you know, it is divisional city. It's not like some big, it's a melting pot, but at the same time, there's different areas that are represented by different different people. And I think we tie into that part. And I think it, it plays very well to see someone who's not from the city and Tommy Egan come in and disrupt that. You know, he's like all of a sudden, well, no, we can do it this way. Why don't you all do this way? Like you, you come in with this New York way of life. And we like, no, for, why don't we don't know, but we've been doing it this way for years. And who are you to come in and <laughs> and disrupt it? <laughs> and who's the who's the best person to disrupt something? It's Tommy Egan. So yeah, absolutely. So because um, it's a brand new cast, how well did you guys gel together? Um, and then alongside on on plus of that, alongside Joseph Sakura, who's been playing this for a while, and then you guys have all come in with this new new energy. How was it yeah. like developing those relationships? Um, it's been a great experience. I mean, for my first Zoom call, it was like we're all on her, kind of like the Brady Bunch thing, where it's like all the different <laughs> people on this. Like you're looking and like, oh, okay, yeah, I know, you know, I know Lily, I know Shane, I've seen him on this, and he's like, you already kind of been a fan of their work. But I think it was even amazing because we're introducing all of ourselves to a whole new universe, and a lot of people have not known us from other things besides, you know, of course Tommy, but then Tommy Flanagan who we all know because he's just, he's an amazing actor and he's a, in his own right. It's just, it's a unique person that you just want to work with. And with everyone else on the Zoom call, it was just like the energy was just already present. It's like everybody was so excited about their characters and it was so fitting. Casting did an amazing job, I feel. You know, I'm, I'm a little biased, but at the same time, did an amazing job with every character that they picked and the person they picked for it. And we had just, uh, you know, as, as Joseph being there, we all kind of leaned on him to kind of make sure he showed us the direction and where we need to go with the show and how we need to do it. And we leaned on that and we all just kind of like, oh, we want to bring value to this show. So when we all had that type, same type of interpretation, it was like everything else just came to play. And it's like we all came to, came to play, but we also came with our A games. And that's what, you know, I hope we represent and I hope that's what we really wanted. I really wanted to be authentic. I wanted to make sure people could really relate to the character and I wasn't coming off as, you know, just some type of, just somebody I wanted to really em embellish who Diamond was and, and, and really kind of like, yeah, get to that point. So cast, cast, I, I basically, I can't stop speaking enough about the cast. <laughs> I love the cast, my cast mates. I love everybody involved and it's been an amazing journey and I hope we can continue to go on because it's, it's just really been that well. It's been that good. Yeah, and, and it, the quality shows, I, I just got to, it's just a really good series and I can't wait for everyone to watch it because it's going to blow people's minds um thank you so much for talking with me today it's been an absolute pleasure and you've been great thank you so much sir you've been great as well and i appreciate you taking the time to interview me and i'm excited about paul before force everybody needs to watch it on stars play international let's go uk Shout yes everyone oh, watch it <laughs> yes i'm looking forward to come out to the uk too so yes 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 i'm getting excited about it let's go Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.